State Sports Link's third down chirp is delivered by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Visit papajohns.com today for more info. Hello and welcome to Third Down Chirp, delivered by Papa John's. The football show every week where we give you not only highlights and analysis, but an inside all access look at everything Ball State football. I'm your host, Kyle Binder, alongside Pat Boylan and Chris Rankle. It's good to be here, Kyle. Uh, you know, it should be a fun year for us doing this show throughout the entire year. You know what, guys? There's only one season that matters to me football season, and I'm happy it's here. Absolutely. Before we talk about the upcoming season, let's take a look back to last year. Sean Baker, current senior on the team, has had an incredible three year history here at Ball State. Chris Rankle has more on the story. The 2008 football season was one of the most successful in Ball State history. Among the stars that came out during the historic campaign was freshman All-American safety Sean Baker. Uh, you know, it was, it was exciting, especially the year we had, you know, 12 and 0. It's, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was tough, you know, to keep up with the speed as a freshman. Those first couple games, learning the system, it's unbelievable. You know, uh, I can remember those 08 games like it was yesterday in my redshirt season. Uh, it, it's just, it goes really fast, and I take advantage every day. You know, in just the month and a half I've been here, Sean is, is probably one of the best leaders I've coached in 20 years of coaching and uh, so I think that is, is a, a quality you really like to have in your, in your upper class players and Sean's as good as I've been around. Now three years later Sean Baker has become one of the premier defensive backs in the Mid-American Conference. Heading into his senior season Sean has already set the Ball State career interception record but for him there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, the coaches are doing a great job of you know, putting out the defense and the offense and special teams, and I think the players are doing a great job picking it up. It's just come down to, uh, you know, learning each other and learning the new terminology and the new techniques the coaches are bringing in with them. You just, you got to know your teammates. You know, when they come in, you'll learn a lot about them that first summer when we get into summer workouts. But uh, I just got to make sure I know exactly what I'm doing every single day. I got to know where everyone else is. I got to, you know, just make sure I'm doing the right things first, and then I got to trickle down, and I got to bring a good attitude to practice every day. As the Cardinals move forward into a season of uncertainty, they will look to their emotional leader for guidance as they face some of the biggest names in college football. Sean's a great player. Um, he definitely goes over and beyond uh, what you have to do as a Division one football player. Uh, he tries to go out every day and make himself better. And uh, as a leader, um, I think he's a guy that a lot of, a lot of guys look up to and uh, idolize. He definitely brings everybody up, makes you around him better. He's somebody everyone everyone looks up to as on the field as a player, and the fact he's so vocal, you know, it puts him in that position as well. So I think everyone definitely looks up to him, tries to rise to his level. I think that's what he asks of the people around him. Sean is a high energy guy. Uh, you know, he's a vocal leader, and uh, you know, he's a positive guy. You know, like I said, high energy likes to. You know, he's a charismatic guy that uh, you know I think players listen to and they kind of rally around him. Having broken the all-time interceptions record last season, Sean Baker has established himself as one of the all-time great Cardinals. However, heading into his senior season, his work is still not done. You got to uh, win that MAC championship in Detroit. That's the only thing we're shooting for, and uh, that's the ultimate goal, so that's it. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Chris Rankin. Well, Chris, good job on the story there. And uh, Pat, what do you think of Sean Baker's legacy so far? And what do you think it's going to be? I mean, he's still got another year to play. Well, for me, his legacy really goes back to his freshman year of college. You look back at that IU game uh, back his freshman year. He had a huge pick six just before halftime, and it was a huge momentum shift. Ball State ended up taking the momentum, taking the game, of course, against Indiana. And then what does he do last year? Six interceptions, ties the program record, then goes and beats it. He's at 15 right now. That number can only improve. And Chris, you know, if he's not the best D-back Ball State's ever had, he's definitely uh, among the elite few. Well, to me, he's one of the most elite defenders Ball State has ever had. I would go so far to say one of the best ever because just not only his on-field production, which he has been very, very good at, is the total package. He's got the passion for football. He's a great leader. Coach Lembo has been with him for a couple months, and he already loves this kid. He was talking about him all day in the press conference. You know, if, For me, though, if Sean Baker really wants to cement himself as one of the greats, He's going to have to lead this team full circle back to a winning season, not even a MAC championship, just get him back to a bowl game, and then, no doubt in my mind, Sean Baker, 
all the way up there. And Pat, part of his production is also due to staying healthy. And even when he's not healthy, he's still playing. He's played with a cast before, and he's starting the season off with a cast again. Yeah, yeah, that small hand cast his freshman year. He's going with it uh, again as a little hand injury, but he's going to be fine. His fingers are free. He's totally free to roam. I don't expect any drop in production from Sean Baker. Well, now the coaching transition over this summer has been a fun one to watch, and there's been many changes in the biggest, probably the weight program. And inside the weight room, much different sights as well. Katie Hawkins has more. Previously, there was a philosophy called high intensity, a lot of machine-based workouts. We've changed our approach to an Olympic-style, ground-based, multi-joint approach. And basically, we're doing more Olympic movements, snatching, cleaning, jerking, squatting heavier, benching a little bit heavier. Looking at the testing numbers, it seemed that their vertical jumps could have been a little higher. We thought their bench could have been a little stronger. Their leg strength was a little bit lower than what we would have liked. So we thought that was the best approach to go about getting them stronger where we want them to be. The entire floor is completely different. We have platforms that are inlaid in the floor to make sure we can do our Olympic movements. There were a lot more machines in the weight room and we have gotten rid of a good amount of them and we you know keep one for every body part just in case a guy gets injured but our philosophy is based around a barbell and not a machine so if we can get as many barbells and platforms in here as possible then that would reinforce what we're trying to accomplish filtering from the seniors to the juniors sophomores and freshmen you know, every kid in here they have bought in completely and you know we are here for them you know we are nothing without them and they've done a fantastic job they've had a great attitude great work ethic and we couldn't be more pleased with the overall attitude toward the team and the philosophy in this room and then how it's going to translate on the field come, come season. You will definitely see a bigger, faster, stronger athlete. Well, it's time the show to take a look at the 2011 Bowl State football schedule. Obviously, Saturday night against IU at Lucas Oil Stadium, but then they head down to South Florida, Chris. South Florida going to be a really tough game. A lot of analysts pick the Bulls to win the Big East, and it's at their second straight NFL stadium. Going to be a tough game for Ball State. They'll play back-to-back -back Bulls because then they go home to play Buffalo. And guys, for me, this is a huge, huge game for Ball State because you've got Indiana where the Cardinals are going to be underdogs, South Florida where the Cardinals are going to be underdogs. Then after Buffalo, you have Army, where that team went to a bowl game last year, then the number one team in the nation at Oklahoma. So sandwiched in there is a game that Ball State won last year, and they're going to really could be a must, must win early in the season to keep that momentum on their side. And then you said it, Pat, they come back home and they play Army. It's going to be a tough game. Army runs that triple option, tough to stop, and it's a team on the rise. They won their first bowl game in I don't know how many years, but it's going to be a very tough game against Army. And then following Army, you have the number one team in the nation in Oklahoma and a team that's likely to stay uh, at number one in the nation if you look at the schedule before that. Some good experience for the players, though, to play a great team in a big football city. Yeah, and then they come back, and it's another tough game. Temple, a quality team still. They still have Bernard Pierce. This is my game to watch. It's the homecoming game. There's going to be a big crowd out here. If the Cardinals can put on a big-time show and get a quality win in Pete Lembo's first year, the community is going to come around this team, and they're going to support it throughout the rest of the season. Then it's back to the road as the Cardinals go to Athens, Ohio, to take on Ohio, a team that's perennially one of the best in that Eastern Division and constantly picked uh, to finish near the top of that MAC East. But then they get a little bit of a break. Central Michigan, a team that Ball State really blew out last year, not as tough as they were in their MAC championship years. So Ball State looking for another win at home against Central. Then they start a three-game road trip. It begins with Western Michigan, a team that blew Ball State out here at homecoming. A real fluke game. It'll be interesting to see if the Cardinals are able to go in there and you know maybe break that curse, kind of get a little bit of a revenge. And speaking of revenge, they got Eastern Michigan right after that, a team that had a humongous comeback at Schumann Stadium last year to get their first win in two years. Ball State looking for revenge against the Eagles. And then if it's tough enough, not tough enough to do three road games in a row, try capping it off with a team that may be you know, the best in the MAC, probably has the past couple of years combined in Northern Illinois. They got to go to the road for that game. Northern Illinois has beaten Ball State the last two years. And it doesn't get any easier Final game of the season at home, senior day against the MAC favorite, Toledo Rockets. It's going to be a tough game, but playing at Schumann Stadium in front of the home crowd, hopefully Ball State send their seniors like Sean Baker, Brig Orgebon out with a win. Yeah, and they're going to have to eat pretty light on Thanksgiving as they have that game the very next day on Thanksgiving break. 
Well, the next segment now was one of those unique features I talked about earlier, miking up players and coaches. And this first week, we miked up the offensive coordinator, Rich Skrosky, and this is how it sounds. Hey, maybe a spin out. Right, that end was collapsing a little bit. You know what I mean on the slugger? So that was the safety running that? Slant side all the way. All right, next group's up. Here we go. Oh, it's wide open. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Space! Look out. Well, beautiful. No, I'm good. Thank you. You're quick. You're fast. You don't need to go any faster than that. But you're not going to just outrun a guy. Block the corner. Block the corner. Nice ball. Hey, there you go. You know it was hot that way? You see the safeties go that way? You know it's hot that way. Give it, give it, give it. There you go. That's a good ball. 35, 35. Ball's in the middle, ball's in the middle. You're still letting him control you. Uh, 62 tuner, what's probably the down and distance? First and 10, take four yards. Don't be greedy, all right? Great job, Cal! Right idea, though. Now head football coach Pete Lembo at the helm of the team, and he's brought some new schemes with him offensively and defensively. Chris, we'll start with you on the defensive side of the ball. Well, guys, over the summer I watched a little bit of film on Elon's defense, and there were a couple things that really stood out to me. Coach Lembo's defensive teams, they like to attack the ball. They're fast and they're very athletic. And you can see evidence of that here at Ball State already. We already saw Aaron Morse dropping down from the safety position to the strong side linebacker position. He put on 30 pounds of muscle just so they can make the move. And then we're going to see a lot of Sean Baker more in the box, blitzing a lot because this defensive line is young and they're going to not really have a good time getting a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. And that's something that we saw last year the team really struggled with. That's going to be a big key this season. Yeah, Chris, and offensively, it's an offense that Coach Lembo himself says he thinks will be fun to watch for the fans. Expect it to be fast-paced. Expect a lot of shotgun. Expect a lot of throwing the football. Coach Lembo has had a receiver in the top five nationally almost every year he was at Elon, so expect that uh, to continue. But really, it should be a fun offense to watch for the fans and an offense that has proven success over the years. And Keith Winning also said it gives him a lot more control over the offense, so he likes it a lot more as a quarterback. All right, well, we'll keep the show moving along, and we'll talk about a segment we have coming up premiering next week. Starting next week, we'll be taking your Ball State football questions and answering them on the show in a segment we call What's Chirpin? All you have to do is tweet at us at thirddownchirp on Twitter or email us at thirddownchirp at gmail.com. Well, it's finally time to talk about the big game. Saturday night, 7 o'clock, Lucas Oil Stadium, Ball State and IU. Last two times these teams played was in 2008. Ball State won 42 to 20 in Bloomington. But guys, everything is completely different for both of these teams. Throw it all out the window. Two new head coaches, Pat, first for IU, Kevin Wilson. Yeah, for IU, it's Kevin Wilson. He's the offensive coordinator, the former offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Wilson's a guy that's coached Sam Bradford. He's coached Adrian Peterson. He's coached the best of the best. He's won national titles. But one thing he doesn't have on his resume is former head coaching experience. And I think that might play into Ball State's uh, edge. As Coach Lembo has 10 years of coaching experience. Coach Wilson, zero. Yeah, and looking at the Ball State thing, it's kind of the opposite. Coach Lembo, as you said, a lot of experience. And he's also a proven winner. These two guys, very similar. They like high-powered offenses. Lembo's had one losing season his entire head coaching career. That was his first season at Elon. They even went 5-6. and six. That's not a bad record. I think a lot of Ball State fans would take a 5-6 and six record. Yeah, and I think you have to give an advantage to a coach that has been an actual head coach, no matter what level uh, it's on. Now, uh, rivalry. People talking about rivalries every once in a while. Uh, In-state rivalries. Ball State and IU haven't played a ton of times. Ball State's only won once. But could you see this thing to kind of turn into a rivalry if they play consistently every year? Well, yeah, they've got three games kind of on the docket. One on Saturday, one the year after, which is going to be at IU, then one at a later date. It's definitely an in-state rivalry, and you don't have to look anywhere further than the recruiting services online to see. You look at a lot of the kids that Ball State's offered, and IU's offered a lot of those same kids. Now, IU is 4-1 and one against Ball State in the five years, but the last game on this field behind me, IU barely edged out a last second win, so it could be very different. It could be a lot closer, and if Ball State could pull this one out, then the Cardinals have taken the last two. Well, really, guys, for me, in order to call it a rivalry, it has to happen every year. You look at the great rivalries. Texas, Oklahoma, they play every year. Ohio State, Michigan, they play every year. Ball State IU wants to become a rivalry. They have to play every year. It's got all the substance, though. The two teams don't necessarily like each other. They cross state lines, you know, a lot of recruiting battles in. And I think Joey Lynch said it best. He wants to play IU every single year because 
it's a fun game for the fans, and it's going to be a great rivalry should it happen every year. Yeah, even those that don't even play a sport, it's still a rivalry when you have friends going to the opposite college. All right, quarterbacks. Big-time talking point for the Cardinals, but it's become a big-time talking point for the Hoosiers as well because they're all, they're all up in the air because they have two, maybe three guys that could play this weekend. Yeah, it's a bigger talking point, I would say, uh, for Indiana than it even is Ball State. You've got two guys that are really kind of emerged a little bit as the favorite. That's Dusty Keel and Edward Wright Baker. And right now, Coach Kevin Wilson, we're only a few days from game day, and he still hasn't named a starter. And I think you could see both of these guys, Dusty Keel and Edward Wright Baker. Wright Baker's a little faster. Keel's the little more of the drop back, prototypical quarterback, but you can't forget the wild card. That's Trey Roberson, a true freshman, he could even see some time as well. They're comparing him to Antoine Randallel, a former IU great. Well, it's kind of the opposite thing for Ball State. Very similar guys, you know, skill set wise. Kelly Page has all the speed. Keith Winning has the arm. However, they got a lot of experience. Winning started the last 10 games last year. And of course, Kelly Page started before Winning got here. So I'd have to give a quarterback edge to Ball State just purely on experience. I think, Pat, you said it best. Keith Winning has better stats and more pretty much everything in the passing category than both the top two IU quarterbacks combined. Yeah, and IU also has more film to watch Ball State quarterbacks. Uh, Ball State has nothing to watch, uh, b basically nothing uh, to watch. Now, players to watch, who do you guys have? For me, it's Jack Tomlinson. Ball State's, you know, wide receiver. He's a sophomore now, and right when he came into the program, Former coach Stan Parrish compared him to Dante Love, and a lot of people were saying, well, whoa, hold on a second. That's pretty high praise, but he's come out, and when he's been able to stay healthy, which is a key, he's been a dynamic receiver for this Cardinal team. He's 5'9", so he's a little undersized, but he's very, very quick and has a knack of finding space. If he can stay healthy, which, of course, is a big if, and his hamstrings have been a problem, he can be a dynamic part of this Ball State offense. For me, it's got to be Barrington. Scott, one thing I really like about this Pete Lumbo offense, at least what he did at Elon, is they were balanced. They threw the ball a lot, but they stuck to the run to set up the pass. Barrington Scott has had a great camp. He's really turned a lot of heads. The walk-on transfer from Northern Illinois. IU gave up 171.8 yards per game on the ground. That was in the bottom of the Big Ten. If Ball State wants to win, they got to be able to control the ball. They got to set up the pass, take some pressure off whoever starts at quarterback. And you know what, Barrington Scott, I like this kid. I think he's going to have a big game. Well, I have to say the players to watch would probably be the offensive line. I think the inconsistency last year really hurt the Cardinals, and I think the offensive line is going to have to step up not only in this game but the entire year uh, to give the Cardinals a lot more success. All right, well, that's all we have today in the show. Make sure you watch every Thursday online at 3 o'clock. Also on TV, WIPB, Comcast, and Fox College Sports. And also social media as usual, at Third Down Chirp and at BSU Sports Link. For Chris Rinkle, Pat Boylan, I'm Kyle Binder. We'll see you next week.